Welcome to the Mystery Knit Along. It's clue day number one, where everybody's super excited to get started. And I'm Jana with Pearl Together, and this is my friend Amba O'Brien. And you're the brain behind all of this. It's awesome. Created all these amazing videos for us as well. <laughs> well, right, but I can't do that without the pattern. And <laughs> I've tried, I am in the process of trying to write a pattern, and it is tough. It is so hard. I'm like... <laughs> So yeah, I have massive respect for, I don't even know how you do it all the time. It's, it's, I think it's really, really hard. <laughs> well, a lot goes into it. Um, some can flow really easily and some can be yeah. much more challenging. And yeah, this one, certainly the mystery initial long patterns, I find challenging because I want them to be interesting, you know, different techniques, accessible to a wide range of niches. I think it's a, this is a super interesting pattern. I, I, w I mean, the things that you just can create is fascinating to me. I'm, I'm not that creative. Tell us about the inspiration for your design as well. Um, so my initial inspiration came from um, Tarina's yarn. So we're using, I used Love and Speckles yarn dyed by Tarina and the three of us have our own kits now that evolved out of the process. I was so happy to get my package from Australia. That's lovely. Yeah. And so um, when I was thinking about a mystery niche along, I was looking for yarn and looking in her Etsy store and she had some skeins of yarn in the kind of orchid, well, I perceive them to be orchidy colours and just loved the idea of those with some green. So I, I picked a selection of six colours from her store and put them together and asked if she'd be interested in making kits with those. So initially I'd planned six 50 gram skeins and had an idea that it would include lace and mosaic and possibly colour work, lots of techniques. Um, and it's evolved into something a little bit different to what I'd envisioned initially. And that's just part of the design process that happened with this design and that tends to happen with other designs too at times yeah um so she ended up sending me 100 gram skeins of each color and I it was just kind of tricky at first I tried to get all six in and then I couldn't it just didn't quite connect for me and so I took a color out and then I took another color out and I felt really bad because she'd created these amazing colors yeah um, so it was kind of a tricky process of having to just go with what I felt excited right. about right um and yeah so then once I'd settled on the four colors and eventually we realized it could work quite well with three colors too so that's why there's the two options um so in total it's 300 grams it could be 300, 200, two 100 gram skeins and two 50 gram skeins or three 100 gram skeins. Mm -hmm. And that makes it a bit more flexible for people. Um, yeah, I don't know how much more I should say, but. Well, it, it does make it more well, flexible, especially if people are knitting from stash, they have options with how to create the contrast. And, and that's not a secret. You have some really good information. If people are still on the fence about whether they want to join in right here or not, you have some fantastic information on your blog post, which I'll link down below that tells, you know, this color needs to contrast strongly with this color. So if people, you know, if it's a little bit, maybe they don't want to order a kit necessarily and they want to knit from stash you have really good tips on how to go about choosing what might work well together but i would say you know you can still order from tarina and it's okay if you're starting late it's okay yeah 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 join yeah, us so. to the end part we'll um after the fifth clue we'll still have another month to finish up our projects together right yeah, mm -hmm. there's time. There's time. And yeah. I'm sure Tarina would be tickled if people still ordered even after the beginning. So it's it's lovely. It's it really is an interesting shawl. I had before I saw your initial thought on it, I just would never have thought to do it in that way. But I think it's so interesting and I'm having a lot of fun knitting it. And it's it's definitely been something to keep keep me engaged because I've done mosaic before, but not quite in this way. And I've done some other color work before but not in this way and so it's not super difficult and the videos will help you will hold your hand through it 
but it's intriguing. I will say, yeah. So, and then <clears throat> once I had worked out my colors and the design concept, you and Tarina worked together to create your own color set, Jenna's yeah. Hype, which is beautiful, and also right. Tarina's Night set, yep. which is also yep. gorgeous. And all so different. And we'll put photos. So it's a lot of fun. So be sure you join the Ravelry groups and we'll have all the links to all that down below so that if you have questions, I mean, there's tons of pattern support. You can leave questions on the video. You can leave questions in my Ravelry group. Obviously, Amba's hosting a massive knit along in her group. So there's lots of places to get help, you know, if you have questions at all. But tell us a little about how we're starting. Tell us about clue number one. I'll just quickly mention, I also have a Facebook group. So if people want to ask questions, if they can't go to Ravelry, uh, on my website, I have a blog post that links to everything. So that's probably the easiest way. Oh, good. Way okay. Yep. To find it all. Yep. Um, so, sorry. What was oh, I question? was just going to say, just to get us started off, tell us about clue number one. Clue number one. We have bubbles for clue number one. And mine, uh, my colour one, I've chosen a really light, lightly variegated skein that's got beautiful, um, and I suppose I didn't really quite finish talking about the design inspiration, but I felt orchid inspiration from the colours of Tarina's kits and that's where I went into this orchid theme where I called it the Caledonia shawl, which is um, a group of Australian orchids and in particular I focused on the spider orchid as my inspiration for this design. So they've got beautiful greens and purples and the lovely colours that are represented in the amber version of Tarina's kit. So that was kind of my starting point. Um, and I was thinking summer, summer garden, although orchids, Australian orchids generally come out in the spring, so it's not quite a summer thing those tones so for clue one I use that lighter variegated yarn that has some subtle um purplish and green speckles and a little bit of yellow it's really beautiful to knit and the lightest green for my color two so some people might have color two and three as the same color that's the three color option because I'm using four colors I've got the color two and color two with a four color kit doesn't need to Contrast as strongly to colour one, whereas colour three, you really want a strong contrast. That's right. the next step. So um, I've chosen the soft green and I just see it as in this design, the leaves of the garden, mm -hmm. the summer garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, leaves so, and represented with the bobble short row knitting, which is right. such a fun technique. It is super interesting. And I have to say, I mentioned this in the technique video that follows this little introduction. But I have to say, when I think of baubles, when that term brings to mind, like a raised up knot, like on the 70s cable sweaters or the Aran sweaters, where you have a really sticky uppy kind of a knot. And this is not that. And I was pleasantly surprised because I don't really like baubles in the traditional Aaron cable sweater where it sticks up and it's nubby you know and you just like play with it I don't like that <laughs> but this is not like that this is this is really it's not sticky uppy it does not raised up off the fabric you know what I mean mm, it's right. quite flat yeah yes so I like that I like your version of the bobble much more and than they do the, flatten out a bit more yes. after block too after I'll be blocking like, yeah yeah yeah. yeah. And so by yeah. the time people are watching this, the clue will be released. So it's okay to say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really liked I really liked that short row technique that you that you have us do in this section. And I really, really like how that how it looks. Mm. Yeah. So it's quite organic, flowy part of the pattern. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed I enjoyed that. Yeah. Well, it's great that you've made the technique video. I'm sure people will appreciate that as well. 
So clue number one, that's this week. And I think, I mean, I think that's a reasonable chunk of knitting to accomplish in a, in a week. I think it's totally reasonable. The techniques are pretty straightforward. You know, we're just doing our regular kind of shawl increases that everybody's familiar with. Just knit front back. You know, it's pretty straightforward. And I'll okay. show you, I'll show everybody about the short rows and there's no wraps and turns. Don't stress about that. It's the German short row technique, which is easy peasy. Easy yeah. peasy and my favorite. It's so easy, but it also is a fantastic result. It's so clean. Yeah, yeah. it is. So don't be intimidated by short rows. It's a great way to learn them. And yeah, the shawl shaping is quite straightforward. I wanted to keep that fairly simple for this particular mm -hmm. niche along and um, focus on the techniques and for it to be, yeah, we know that some, some niches will get clue one knit up in a day. Don't be intimidated by that. I mean, that's great. It's exciting to see the first projects yeah. happen, but yeah, it's definitely designed. But it's okay. Yeah, it might take someone a week to get through it and that's absolutely right. fine. Yeah. It's not a race. Do what you want. <laughs> and there's a whole month at the end of the knit along to finish up all the clues. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. Well, I th I think your design is fantastic, and it's it's interesting, it's intriguing, and and I th I think people will agree as the clues progress that it's definitely engaging, and it's not super difficult, but it keeps it keeps you going, it keeps you intrigued <laughs> and and wanting to know what comes next. So. Excellent. I'm glad to hear yeah. that you're enjoying yeah. it. And then when we're all done, you're going to have to show us how to wear it. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> we'll have we'll have that be. So if people have questions, there's all the links down below. They can go to your group and your Facebook group, and that's easy enough to find all of that. So hop on over, order your yarn from Tarina, get the pattern from Amba. All the links are in her post. So yay. Awesome. yay. <laughs> so we'll see you next week for clue number two. Okay, we're off with clue number one. So I've cast on just using the long tail cast on, which is easy. And if you're new to knitting and you haven't done that before, there's a link in the video description down below on my video on how to how to do a long tail cast on. Um, use whatever cast on you feel is best. Um, that's just my usually 90% of the time, that's my go-to. All right, so we're just going to knit one and then knit through the front and back loop. And I'm not going to go through the whole pattern stitch by stitch, but I will show you how to knit through the front and back loop if you've never done that before. So we're just going to knit one and then knit into the next stitch as normal, but leave it on the needle, swing your right needle around and knit into the back of that same stitch. So then we've made two stitches out of one. Okay, place your marker. Knit one, place your marker, and do the same thing again. And that's how we're, we're increasing right away. Okay, that first row is guaranteed to be slightly fiddly. And it is a little awkward to have markers on each side of just one stitch. And these markers might be a little big for the size needle that I have. But we're going with it. Um, okay, so that will be your right side. Row two on the wrong side, we're just going to carry on doing the same thing. I have quite a, a longer cable here, so I'm fussing a little bit with that. Okay, so again, we're going to knit one, and we're going to have two knit through the front back right in succession. So there's one, two, again, you knit into the front of the stitch, swing your right needle around, and knit into the back of that. So we're going to have some more quick increases here. Okay, slip the marker, knit the center stitch, slip the marker. And then we're going to do the same thing. Two KFBs, and that's and then knit the last one, and that's the end of the row. So just carry on through the setup. I just wanted you to see the KFBs if you haven't done that before. All right, on row three, we're going to do the knit one, KFB, knit to the marker. Now we're going to ha start having some paired increases that are mirrored around the center stitch. So the first one is a make one left. You're going to pick up the bar between these from the front to the back. And what that does, if you'll notice the strand of yarn that's toward you, it's slanted to the left. So that's how I know it's make one left because right away that strand in the front is knitted, is leaning to the left. That's how I remember it. And you're gonna knit into the back of this because that gives it a little twist and it helps to close the hole that might result as, the, as you pick up that bar. So there's our make one left. Then you're gonna knit the center stitch 
and then you'll have a make one to the right after we slip the marker over. So the first time we went in from the front, to make one right, we'll go in from the back and pick up that strand. And you can see that the portion of the yarn that's facing you is slanted to the right. You can see that here, that's leaning off to the right. That's how I remember that and know that I'm doing the correct one. And we'll knit into the front of this one. Sometimes this can be a little bit tricky if you don't have very pointy needles. You might need to just kind of give yourself a little slack there. And it's also a little awkward uh, with such large stitch markers. So I might choose to adjust the size of those here shortly. So don't be surprised if I change the stitch markers. Then we're gonna knit to one before the end of the row. And we'll do our KFB increase in this last stitch. And that's round three. All right, row four is pretty self-explanatory since we've gone over that. Um, and after you finish rows one through four the first time, you should have 17 stitches on your needle, and I do. So now we're just gonna repeat the whole thing, rows, not the whole thing, sorry. Now we're just gonna repeat rows three and four 13 more times, so we have a total of 95 stitches. And I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. So one thing I wanted to point out when you're repeating rows three and four, between those two rows, you're increasing a total of six stitches with every time you repeat those two rows. So one thing you can do to keep track of the repeats, since you're repeating those two rows sequence 13 times, is you, know, you started out with 17 rows after the initial or sorry, so you started out with 17 stitches after the initial first four rows, and then you're gonna increase six every, every time after that, every time that you repeat rows three and four. So you're gonna have 23, 29, 35, 41, 47, and so on. So what I like to do is after every time I get done with rows three and four, I've verified my stitch count, and then I just go through and cross those off so I know when I'm done, and I know that I have the correct stitch count along the way. I do that with lots of patterns, um, but you can particularly find that helpful because Amba has given us the increases after each row. So she's put a plus four after row three and a plus two after row four, so that you know that your net increase after repeating those two is six stitches added. So I hope that helps. Okay, after you finish this setup row, you're gonna begin making these stripes with the contrasting yarn and having these German short rows that create this uh, bobble section here. So the rows where the bobbles occur are the wrong side rows. So in the beginning on my setup row I have a marker here that denotes the right side of my work but that's going to become really clear once you get into this section because you can see where the stripes change colors and that this is clearly the wrong side um, compared to the right side. So the even numbered rows are on the wrong side. However when we do this bobble we're going to do some short rows which simply means we're not knitting all the way across. We're knitting part of a row and turning around and going back. So you'll notice on the bobble instructions, we're gonna turn our work after we knit the prescribed number of stitches here. We're gonna turn your work, and you still have the working yarn coming off the front here. And so with the yarn in front, you're going to slip this first stitch from the left to the right needle, go in as if to purl. So you're slipping that first stitch purl-wise, and you still have the yarn on the front. Then what we're gonna do is pull this yarn to the back. In doing that, it pulls up the legs of the stitch underneath, the row underneath. So you're gonna pull that up and you can see that those two come up and create a twin stitch. All right, so that puts our yarn in the back and then we can knit the next five. Four, five, and now turn your work. I try to remember which way I turn my work, you know, this way or this way, um, so that I don't twist my yarn. So if I turn my work over to the right, the first time I'll try to turn it back the other way just to keep my yarn from tangling. So again, you're gonna slip this first stitch, same thing, slip it to the right needle and pull this up, pull the legs of that stitch below up so it creates a twin stitch and your yarn is now in the back. And now we're gonna knit four. So we knitted five the first time, we're knitting four this time, and we're, count we're counting down. Now if you're talking to someone like I am right now and I forget, how many, I just did three or four. You can see, if you go, you can tell that that's the next twin stitch. You can see what that looks like. And that's the one we pulled up before. So there were four stitches between the twin stitch we made right here, and then we just knitted four before we arrive at the next one. So that's your signal when to you turn your work if you're not sure. Okay, turn your work, do the same thing. 
slip as if to curl, pull that a little bit tight so that it goes up. You don't want to pull it too tight because you are going to have to knit into it later. So you want to keep your gauge relatively even, but you do need to raise that up so it looks like a twin stitch. And now we're going to knit three. Okay, turn your work. Same thing, slip as if to purl off to the right needle, raise up those legs on that stitch below, knit two. So you see what we're doing. We're just counting down with our number of knit stitches and going three, two, one while we're doing these short rows. And that knitting back and forth is what's gonna create that bobble. Okay, so that was knit one, turn your work. And on the last one, you're gonna simply slip this over and pull it up. Now you have your twin stitches and we've ended with the wrong side facing us. So that's step eight and it says do not turn your work at this point. You're going to continue on with the instructions on whatever row in the bobble section that you happen to be on. And after you complete the CSRB, which is the Calendonia short row bobble, now we're going to knit 15. Now you're going to knit this twin stitch together as if it's one stitch. So that's one there's two, three, and just carry on with your 15 now. And what you'll see that does is that creates that little oval. Now we knitted three of those, but when we come back the other way on a different row, we had a couple more that are going to have to be knitted. So you can see one right there. You can identify that one. That's going to have to be worked when we come back all the way across again on a different, a subsequent row. Okay, so I'll show you that one more time. Let me knit to where I'm gonna do my next short row bobble and I'll show it to you again. All right, one more time. I finished this one and I have knitted my 15 across and now I'm gonna do the short row bobble again. So we turn our work as it indicates in step one. Okay, we're gonna have the yarn in the front. Keep the yarn in the front while we slip this purl wise, raise, tug on it a little bit to create that twin stitch and knit five. All right, turn your work, whichever way doesn't twist your two colors, slip this, create the twin stitch, and knit four. One thing I want to point out though, let, let's say you make a mistake in your stitch count somewhere and you, you end up having to tink back a bobble. Let me show you what that's going to look like. If you tink this back, just simply remember what you did to create that twin stitch was pulling this up. So just relax it, give it some slack, and then it's just going to be like tinking a regular purl stitch or sliding it back over to the right, or sorry, to the left, turning your work and then tinking it back as a regular stitch. So tinking it back or unknitting is simply just doing the exact reverse of how you created it. So I think I have to knit four this time, but if I was talking and I forgot, I can easily read my knitting and notice that, okay, this doesn't look like a regular stitch. You can tell that's been pulled up before. So now it's time to turn my work and create another twin stitch and do it again, knit three. Turn my work back, another twin stitch, knit two, turn work, slip as if to purl, create the twin stitch, knit one, turn my work back, and slip, create one twin stitch. Now I'm going to knit 15, and I have three twin stitches that need to be knitted to finish off creating that short row bobble. Whoops. Okay, what I did just there is I slipped, I got part of the twin stitch and part of it not, so just carefully go back and fix. All right, three, and now I'm off knitting my 15 and doing the whole thing over again. So that's awesome. How fantastic is that? Doesn't that just make a lovely pattern there? I really like the, the waviness of it. It's brilliant.